Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototopus Mystery, and this will be part 287 in our series. Today we're looking at the title, Events in the Heavens. What the scripture tells us in the end times is that the revelation of the things that have been hidden are going to be revealed. <clears throat> the things that pertain to the earth matrix, the things that pertain to the <coughs> heavens, as the Bible has described them, are going to be revealed. We find as we pursue these scriptures, <clears throat> the life of man on earth is going to be dramatically changed by events that take place in the heavens. Now before we even go into this, let me give a brief description because organized religion has given such a shallow comprehension of heaven that most people leave, most Christians leave this life basically ignorant of where they're going and what's waiting for them. The scripture lets us understand in no uncertain terms that there is no where in the scripture where you hear or you see the word heaven. It's always heavens. The word is plural. In the Hebrew it's Shemayim in the Greek, it's oranos. Both words can know plurality. The scripture tells us that the, that the earth matrix is connected to the <coughs> heavens, which are a series of vast regions that <coughs> totally eclipse the earth. <coughs> the earth is at the bottom of a hierarchy, a stratified series of vast regions in which events and life team with activity. Having said that, giving this just basic concept, we want to take a look at what the scripture is telling us. Scripture teaches from the beginning of sorrows to the coming of the Lord to set up his kingdom the vast expanse of the heavens will be the abode of humans taken from the earth. Millions of the human race are going to be taken physically off the earth into this stratified region, regions that <clears throat> constitute the heavens. We want to take a look at some scripture that validate this. Turn to Matthew 24 verse 31. We're going to be using this scripture quite frequently. <clears throat> and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And actually in the Greek it's saying from one end of the heavens to the other. So in all the habitable regions of the heavens, <coughs> human beings are going to inhabit because of circumstances that overtook them on the earth. Is the implication that <coughs> from the beginning of sorrows, which of course we understand to be the reality, the Luciferians coming up take many humans into the heavens? Yes. It's not the second stringers, because they've been shaken at that point. Yes. Okay. Yes. Of those that he's taking, or they are taking, he can take a born-again Christian up into the heavens? Sure. Unless they stand on the authority of 
Can cool. a born again Christian be abducted by aliens? Sure. Mm. If he does it, operate in the in the power that he's been given. Exactly. Right. That's the answer. Has organized religion prepared born again Christians to take authority? No. Does anybody have any idea of the, what constitutes the heavens? No. No. It's not by accident. Mm -hmm. It's designed to have that effect. But people are just so focused centrally on their concept of an earth that's uh, a, a total um, misconception. The earth is not a planet. It's a matrix. Right. Mr. Jones. For my benefit, will you please explain to me one more time my authority, if if indeed I'm going to encounter some kind of spiritual attack that I need to project my belief system over them so they can they're prevented from it. I want I want to be reinforced with the explanation. So please run that past me one more time. Uh. The Betty and Barney thing would be... Uh, Turn to Luke, the 19th chapter, and then we're going to come back. Luke 19. Yeah. Uh, let me make sure. Just a minute. Just bear with me a minute. Yes, bear with me. Are you going to give us an example of the power we have so that... Yes. Okay. Excuse me, Luke 10. Luke 10. 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power, authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all, 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 all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, that's your authority. So if you encounter something, uh, something lands, gets out, looking menacing, you can stand in the air by the authority that the Lord has given to you to rebuke its actions and put a fear in it and it will turn and it off. So an example, speaking out, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Or, or, or give me an example, Mr. Jones. Let's tell it to depart. In the name of Jesus, right? Jesus, yeah. I used, I had a, let me say, interaction and I, I spoke out because of the power and the authority that the Lord has invested in me, I bind you da, 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 in Jesus' name. And that was the, the nut of it. It worked. Absolutely. You know, yeah. but see, you knew that was what had to be done. Yes. That was the first time that you put it into practice because right. you knew that was what you're supposed to do. Right. And so that, I believe that will happen to each one of us. Absolutely. If indeed we <clears throat> keep remembering we have this power. I, you won't have to worry about that. It's the spirit in you. That will do it right. It's going to speak against this thing. There was a, a, there was an example of this. His pastor was coming home from a church service one night. It was in a field in a countryside. Mm. This UFO comes down, lands, and this creature comes out. 10, 12 feet tall, menacing looking, evil looking thing, and came back and started walking toward this pastor. He stood there, planted two feet in the ground, and looked at this thing and said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, get thee hence. Well, the thing took off. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have the authority to do <clears throat> righteous in the earth. The Lord gives us that authority. Nothing can withstand that. If Satan came back at, at you, you can stand there and rebuke right. him in Jesus name. or basically disarm him. The scripture says in James, with, with resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You have that authority. Nothing to fear from these creatures. Thank you, Brother Jones. But let's go on. <laughs> Thank you. 
that we said, starting at the beginning of sorrows, the vast expanse of the heavens will be abode of humans who are taken from the earth. Now the Lord says from one end of the heavens to the other. So what you're going to see is multitudes of hundreds of thousands of humans taken into these heavens. Mm -hmm. Ultimately to be returned at the second coming. Now scripture teaches some will be driven there. Why? to support Satan's mercantile system that he's going to establish or re-establish at the beginning of sorrows. I mean, driven, are you alluding to being sold into trafficking? No. <coughs> I mean, they're going to be forced. Uh, remember, portals are opening all over the okay. place. They're going to extend down to the earth. And uh, the Luciferians are going to force Christians into these things, mm -hmm. into the regions in which they're, they're, they're setting up the mercantile system. Right. Deuteronomy 30, verse 4. Deuteronomy of thine be driven out <clears throat> unto the outmost parts of heaven from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee <coughs> driven out it's not necessarily you folks coming down and flying off remember this thing that you're looking at is a construct space-time fabric it's going to be dismantled after it's shaken and you're going to see the heavens as they actually exist mm. and in that respect you're going to have uh, the thing is going to be festooned with portals doors windows gates that are, are going to be opening and things are going to be coming back and forth because this whole thing is a matrix it's all one time was connected so that one could go from one to the other and back and forth again. That's going to be reestablished. Should we understand, therefore, that prior to the beginning of sorrows, the Luciferians haven't taken anybody into these heavens that you're referring to? I wouldn't <coughs> say that. And how is it then that when the heavens are shaken, we don't see humans falling out as well as the Luciferians? Well, territory? it would be on such a small scale because the, the people that are going to do it are in prison right okay. now. <coughs> but I believe it has been done. Look, you have Indian tribes here that claim they once came from the heavens. Yes. yes. <clears throat> when they say that, they're saying their origin is from the heavens or they were once in, in prison there? No, they're, they're from the heavens. That they were a people that basically were created or brought forth in the heavens. Mm. Look at it this way. If you have multiple millions of people that are going to be brought back to Earth, it must mean that you have multiple re regions that can sustain human life mm -hmm. abundantly. And I believe that's the case. So, of the, the trillions and millions that you're just now speaking of, how many of them are brothers? It depends on the circumstance that took them there. We're going to look at this as we progress. You can see for yourself. <clears throat> so the scripture says, If any of thine be driven out. This refers to what you just re referred to, Mr. Smith, brothers. God's people. If any of God's people are driven out, he's going to bring them back. Jesus says he will, the angels will take his elect elect from one end of heaven to the other. So most of them are going to be Christians. Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches these heavens will be liberated from Satan's dominion and the people <clears throat> later 
return to earth. Revelation 12, verse 11 to 12. We're look, going to look at examples. Remember, this isn't just one heaven. He said from one end of the heavens to the other. So it's going to be the, every level, we're talking about secondary creation, heavens, that basically sustain human habitation. Humans are going to <coughs> be taken there. Revelation 12, verses 11 to 12. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore, so verse 11 is connected to verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, heavens, not earth, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. So this whole scenario took place in the heavens. It's a tremendous affliction that was leveled against repentant Christians. Proceeding or directly following this persecution, the persecutors were evicted from the heavens. Talking about Satan and the dragon tail forces, his angelic host, were evicted by a war after they persecuted and killed off a lot of Christians. What's being addressed here are the remaining Christians that are in the heavens. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, in ye that dwell in them. For the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, well, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now you can tell, you can tell that these are Christians that he's referring to if you turn to Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, this is a higher heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren, Mr. Smith, these are Christians, of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them. How do you accuse them? Because they were in heaven with him. Cast them, accuse them before our God day and night. All this took place in the heavens. Tremendous activity taking place in the heavens. Yes. So all these that are in the heavens, they were driven into the heavens? Yes. <coughs> yes. By the Lucifer. Right. They, these, this group, missed the rapture. The Christians. Right. They shouldn't have been there in the first place. Right. But they missed the rapture. Therefore, they were eligible to be taken by the Luciferians. Because they're cut off. He says, I know you're not. Mm -hmm. Later on, they repent. When they repent, there is a great persecution against them. After the persecution, or the persecution may have been disrupted by the great war that's fought, in which Satan and the angels are kicked out and the heavens are left now in a state of rejoicing because they have been liberated from the Luciferian death grip that they've had on them. So it's only the failure of these born-again saints in the heavens. It's only the failure of them <coughs> rebuking the enemy at the point that they were being taken that has caused them to be in the heavens in the first place. No, ones. no. Uh, what caused them to be in the heavens is they missed the rapture. They were disqualified. So if they're disqualified, then the enemy has a right to take them. I thought you were saying that we see the majority of this activity taken to the heavens between the beginning of sorrows and the rapture. Exactly. So exactly. They're, they're taken before the rapture. I'm saying that the, this particular inference takes place oh, this after the rapture. Okay. I'm talking okay. about this group. Okay. <coughs> 
they're taken after the rapture. They miss the rapture. If they miss the rapture, they have forfeited their authority gotcha. to resist. Okay, so they miss the rapture. They don't qualify to go to heaven, but they are they're driven into the heavens yes. by the Luciferians. Yes. So in essence, they miss the rapture, but they still made the heavens. No. But they are in a in a captive. Captive. No. 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 Okay. You look at two different states of existence. They missed the glorification, which would have made them sons of the adoption. Okay. They've been taken to the primary creation right. had that taken if that had happened. They are in the secondary creation in the corrupted Luciferian kingdom because they forfeited what they should have gotten. Gotcha. And in that respect, they are now under his dominion. Mm -hmm. When Adam sinned, he forfeited his liberty, They're went into activity. bondage. Yes. Okay. Now, what happens is they repent. <laughs> it them in a totally different capacity now. They repent, <coughs> and they also die a martyr's death. Some of them do. Some of them. They all repent, but then they're all killed because the ones that are alive are told to repent. Rejoice. They're still in the heavens. The ones that have died, the spirits have gone someplace else. They're no longer in this region of the heavens. They've gone to probably their estates or whatever it is that they would do automatically at death. Here, these are still alive. This group is going to be taken back to earth at the second coming. Matthew 30, 24, verse 31. We're looking at the groups that are going into the heavens in different circumstances. This is a group of Christians who missed the rapture, forfeited what they could have had. The result is it working as slaves in the Luciferian mercantile system until they repent and until they are uh, 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 until the Father decides this is a time for them to be liberated and the enemy's kicked out. That's one circumstance. We're going to look at some others. Now, <coughs> Scripture indicates at the beginning of sorrows, there will be those who will be killed for their stand for Christ. Matthew 24, verses 8 to 9. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So they are martyred. And if they're martyred, what happens? They die. Their spirit goes to a level of heaven. Turn to 2 Corinthians Fifth chapter, <clears throat> verse 1 and 2. For we know if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. <coughs> we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now this is a spiritual heaven which you go to naturally when you die. If you're killed or if you die of old age, it doesn't matter. It's still resident waiting for you. It's designed for you. <coughs> Your body remains here. Your spirit your soul goes there. 
These were killed, they were martyred for God, the name of Jesus, at the beginning of sorrows. Their soul goes to this residence. At the second coming, they too are going to be brought back to earth to participate in the resurrection and receive their rewards. These are those that lived in a lackadaisical, uh, wishy-washy, lack of total commitment until the beginning of sorrows. And then they saw what time it was. They're persecuted by their families, hounded by society, refusing to give up their commitment now because they know if they give up their commitment they're totally lost. They hold on to that. Now they're totally committed. Well, they pay the price. They become martyrs. They die righteously. They go to this region and then they're going to be returned. This is two situations that you're looking at. Yeah. When you said returned, returned where? To earth. When? The rapture. Okay. So you're assuming they all make the rapture. I mean, not at the rapture, at the resurrection. <coughs> they're going to make the rapture because okay. they're, <laughs> they're going to live for... You almost got me. <laughs> no, they participate in the resurrection of what's called the resurrection unto life. Okay. Which is the second coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to take a look at another situation. Scripture teaches the apostles and prophets who are killed. This is after the rapture. But this is not the group that missed... Well, they missed the rapture, but they get killed at a later time. Put it that way. Remember, there are many groups that are martyred after the rapture. Do you mean that they are killed immediately after the rapture? No. Much later. Much the later. Okay. They survive until much later on. So therefore the intensity of the influence is much greater. The point yes. I'm, I'm bringing out is they will end up in a higher level of the levels. Well, they're going to end up in a higher level, but they're not going to end up in the heaven of heavens. Okay. Put it that way. These are killed by the harlot city. As we will see. Scripture teaches the apostles and prophets who are killed by those of the haunted city will ascend to a heaven, this is a different heaven, to await her destruction. And they're going to await their return, of course, at the second coming. Revelation 18, verses 19 to 20. And they, <clears throat> the people that are witnessing the destruction of the harlot city, cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea, by reason of her costliness, from one hour is she made desolate. So they're witnessing the destruction of the harlot city. Now notice what it says in verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. So the heaven they're talking about is a lower heaven in which these apostles and prophets have been martyred, but their souls are there, waiting for the return of the Lord. So you said they're not in the heaven of heavens. Where would we find them? A lower heaven. Remember, heaven is stratified. Sure. How far lower? <laughs> Hard to say. Okay. They're in a lower region that's been designed for them because of the conditions that they have been encountering, the things they've experienced. 
they die and they gravitate because of the level of spirituality the heaven they can accommodate that level. It's not the heaven of heavens and because they missed the rapture. It's not the heavens where the first martyrs went to because these have gotten higher, they've been here longer, they've got a higher state of spiritual maturity. Yes. Is it in the secondary creation or is it in the <coughs> secondary? It's in the secondary, secondary creation. And so we find <coughs> dependent upon the time, the conditions that the person is living in and <coughs> has his experience that's the heaven that he's going to wind up in. Some are going to be physical heavens. Some are going to be spiritual heavens. Of course, <clears throat> some are going to be higher than others, lower than others. Okay. It depends all on the individual because the heavens are stratified. When you say physical heavens, you're referring to the secondary. Yeah, all in the secondary. All the secondary. You have spiritual, you have physical, all in the secondary. So the only ones who are in the primary are those who made the rapture. On, uh, in their own different levels. Yes. Anyone who does not make the rapture is in the secondary physical heavens. Uh, with the exception of those that we just read about, beginning of sorrows, okay. they commit. Right. Therefore, they're fully qualified for the primary creation okay. heavens. Okay. They're, that's where their state is. That's interesting. Right. Do any of them have a position or they only have salvation? All of them. All of them. You die a martyr's death, you have a reward coming. So you got to be a priest. Or a king. Depends. Mm. Uh, a lot of these <clears throat> a lot of these individuals, remember, the Lord comes in uh, Luke 19, and uh, <clears throat> he uh, judges, he says, this guy's going to rule ten cities, mm -hmm. that guy's going to rule five cities, they're kings, they're not mm. priests. When did you receive the understanding of abodes in either the spiritual or the physical heavens? Last night. <laughs> That's awesome. Because okay. you know we're going up at that, that slide. No, that <laughs> I didn't think you'd get that far. No, that is right. <laughs> okay. Now, <clears throat> what we find here. Scripture teaches, Lord. at the end, these heavens will rejoice at their liberation. They're going to all be liberated. Not at the same time. <clears throat> but ultimately, the heavens get liberated first, then the earth gets liberated. The Luciferians get driven down in phases until Revelation 12, they're driven down to the environs of the earth. And then of course, <clears throat> they're going to be driven down to the surface of the earth and then imprisoned in the heart of the earth. It's a staged descent for most of them. Some of them are going to be thrown down immediately, like the second stringers, and, uh, the coming of the Lord to uh, gather the the body of Christ. They get they get kicked out of heaven, fall down to the earth, they're imprisoned in the heart of the earth. Those Luciferian kings who decide to, I guess the word is help, the kings, the, 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 the Prototicus kings, apart from an extension of life by a day or a week or whatever it has to be, is there anything else that they would receive for doing no. so? No. It's just that extended period of... They didn't do anything to <coughs> put it off. Put right. it off the judgment. Right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, <coughs> scripture teaches, at the end, these heavens will rejoice at their liberation, turn to Psalms 89, verse 2. You're going to find something interesting here. Amen. Psalms 89, verse 2. For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. Now if you take a look at the word faithfulness, 
<coughs> you find something interesting. It comes from a Hebrew term, munah, which means truth, stability, set office, in addition to faithfulness. So what he's saying here, he's talking about the heavens are going to be liberated. He's talking about God's truth is going to be established in the heavens. Why? Because the Luciferians have totally corrupted it and lied, just like they've done on earth. They're going to be liberated. The people are going to be set free. And God's truth is going to bring stability to these heavenly regions. Can you expand on the set office part of that so we can get a bit on that? <clears throat> We're going to go hold that, okay. hold that thought. We're okay. still going to uh, pursue some scripture here. Drop down to verse 5. We're going to read verse 5 to 7. <clears throat> In the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord. Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Now the way this is worded and the way it's taught is the people are going to think he's talking about one thing going on in the heavens and another going on on earth. That is not what's being said. What's being said is the congregation of the saints are in heaven praising him for reestablishing or being part of reestablishing order in the heavens. The congregation of the saints he's referring to here is the Right. Okay. Let's go on. Verse 5. Verse 6, For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? It's talking about the Lord Jesus in comparison to his brethren. He's going to stand out as the elder brother. Of course. Verse 7, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. This is the church of the firstborn. The assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all that are about him. The word about comes from a Hebrew term, sabib, which means all around him. It's talking about around his throne. Everybody gives him reverence. Everybody is in awe. It's talking about the father is receiving awe and reverence from the sons. Of the sons, <clears throat> the Lord stands out as the, 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 the main uh, uh, focus of the whole group. He's the centerpiece of the whole group. This is giving you a picture of the prototypes in heaven that have, have liberated the heavens. And the heavens are praising the Lord for being liberated. I like the part where the prototypes are thanking the Lord for allowing me to be part of it. Yes. That's me. <laughs> yes. Now, there's a lot of scriptures like this. It takes time to, 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 to take them apart. Mm. But they have been... <clears throat> the Bible is coached. It's... I won't say... I will say the translations, I'll put it that way, are coached to eliminate the understanding of the things of the heaven and the things of earth and the things of the subterranean region. To only focus on the things of earth, the here and the now which is what is preached, which is what's taught. The saints are being robbed of their inheritance because they're being kept in ignorance until they leave this place of what's really going on. So what we find, this is the beginning of a, probably a series, events taking place in the heavens at the start of the beginning of sorrows. You're going to see tremendous activity Everything is going to change. Turn to Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Isaiah 51, verse 6. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. 
For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. And the heavens will vanish away like smoke. It's talking about the, what you're looking up here at the space-time continuum. What you look at now is a blue sky. At this point, won't be there anymore. You're going to be able to look right up at the heavens that we're reading about here. Those <coughs> that are the uh, secondary heavens, and you're going to see the primary creation. Oh, you're going to see everything in a panorama. And people are going to wipe out because they're not prepared for it. Turn to Luke 21. Verse 26, <clears throat> men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. You know, scripture after scripture is telling us events in, taking place in the heavens are going to eclipse events taking place on earth. And people that are not prepared for it are going to be caught up in it and not have a clue about what's happening. Matter of fact, even now, tonight, before we came here, I'm looking at YouTube. And they're talking about people freaking out because they're hearing noises and sounds coming from the heavens. Mm -hmm. They're hearing scraping sounds, they're hearing trumpets, they're hearing things that sound like um, uh, shrieks and cries of people. All coming from the heavens. They're seeing lights. One guy, and it's on YouTube, was videotaping this noise, and a UFO suddenly flew right past him. He's in his apartment building. This black disc-shaped vehicle flew past him, and then the whole the whole sky lit up, and you could hear sounds mm -hmm. coming through uh, on a panoramic scale. The stuff is happening now, sure. and people, the first thing they say is, "What is that?" I don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> Can I? bring you back to the point that where you recognized that the saints will be in both the spiritual heavens and the physical heavens. After the point of the rapture, those saints going up, those various groups going up who've missed the rapture, I'm understanding that everyone who makes the rapture will obviously be in the uh, spiritual heavens. Heaven and some, heavens. Yes. Well, I was going to say, <clears throat> some in uh, everyone else, some in heaven and heavens, and any below that. I'm only talking about those who made the rapture at this point. At the rapture, everybody is going to be in the heaven of heavens. Nobody's going to be in Eperanios. Okay. Because they are monitoring events, on the, controlling things on the earth, preparatory to the end of the tribulation period, the second coming. What point do they go to Eperanios? After, uh, I would say after the end of the tribulation period. Second coming, okay. So, those who do not make the rapture, how, how do we know, how can we uh, uh, verify whereabouts they will be in either the spiritual or the physical heaven? It depends on the circumstances they're dealing with. <clears throat> as, you, as we read the scripture, you can see the, the, the chronicle of each group. <clears throat> the ones immediately after the beginning of sorrows are going to be martyred. That's the first, that's the first declaration. Verse 8, these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse okay. 9, then shall they deliver you right. up okay. to be killed. Okay. They are going to go to their estates in the primary creation okay. because they've made it right. Okay. This is before the right. rapture. Right. Then you have the establishment of the Luciferians with their mercantile system. They're going to drive millions of people into the lower heavens, the physical heavens, mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. 
the system that he's established. What I'm asking is, to what degree do the physical um, heavens that you've just described become the eternal abodes of those who are martyred? The, nobody, be, be, nobody gets an e eternal abode in the physical. Okay, that's what I'm trying to nail down. So everything it's is all temporary because they're there until the Lord returns. Then they're going to be gathered back to earth. Right. End of the tribulation period. Okay. Anybody in the secondary heavens, human, is going to be gathered back to earth to experience the second coming. Gotcha. Get his reward. Okay. His place established or whatever it is that you know he needs to be dealt with in that respect. Right. So everyone eternally is going to be in the uh, spiritual heavens. Okay. Will they be in the There is no second creation. It's just the new. It's just the new. The new earth and the the uh, the new heavens. That's it. And all that spiritual. Okay. Okay. I was getting confused for some reason. I thought perhaps you'd found something I I was unaware of. I wanted to be in that. Yeah. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> now what we're doing is we're looking at the progression of things from the point where we are now mm -hmm. into <clears throat> the 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 period just prior to the rapture. And then after the rapture, you're going to get what I call reality shifts. Starting with the beginning of sorrows, it's going to be a reality shift, which continues on until the rapture. The rapture is another reality right. shift, which continues until the second coming. Okay. Okay. Would you call the strong delusion that the Father brings the humans at that time another reality shift? It's a reality shift within a reality. Okay, not, not within the... All within the tribulation era. Gotcha, of reality. All right. That's why you have the seven years. Uh, they think that the tribulation period lasts seven years. Mm. But what the scripture is saying, the seven years constitutes a reality shift because one constitutes three and a half years and then the other goes off the time scale. You can't record it from days, minutes, and hours because it's always, on earth, it's under Luciferian control. And he's making his own days, his own time scale, everything else. But God still has everything from his uh, chronos, from his master progression. And those that are in the higher levels see the, the, the there's no disruption in the continuation of the progression of God's time on earth is you know wide disruption people are going to think they're in a new era because the Luciferians are going to engineer a false time series which is what they do anyway sure. he's going to take control of uh, seasons and times manipulate the people on earth into thinking, you know, well, he's 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 a, the final say so in all things cuz look, he can he can control times and seasons and all the rest of it. So it's all uh, a deception that the people on earth are going to fall under.